Hi everyone, welcome along to the Taste um, Cadbury Theatre. And um, this is my offside of Melanie. We work together in Melbourne all the time in the Cadbury kitchen. And um, we're the ones that are responsible for bringing um, all of the recipes to you on the Cadbury Kitchen um, website. There are lots and lots. We add another eight recipes every month. So we're very busy form getting some ideas, formulating and testing the recipes, writing the recipes. Then we go out to the photographic studio and shoot them. And then they come onto the website so that you can see them. So that's cadburykitchen.com.au. There's always lots of delicious, duh, lots of delicious chocolate ideas for you to try there. The other place that you can catch us up is on the Cadbury Kitchen Facebook page. Since the uh, the website, since the Facebook site started, in fact, there's over 50,000 people that like us. So um, we're feeling a lot of love. And um, there's lots of great ideas that you guys are actually putting back into the site, which makes it interesting for us too. And we welcome your feedback, which is terrific. Now, Mel and I have been busy this year. Um, we put together this cookbook. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw it in the supermarkets. It was on a special promotion in Coles. And if you bought three Philadelphia products, you were able to um, receive this cookbook, which is a, um, a marriage made in heaven, if you ask me, of Cadbury, the C Cadbury Baking Chocolate Range in Philadelphia. So there are over 75 recipes in there, all with Philadelphia and Cadbury Baking Chocolate, and there's lots of delicious ones to try. Has anyone got this one already? <laughs> Good. A couple of you. Okay, well, if you don't have it, there are some fantastic ideas for you um, over beyond the tasting, uh, if, beyond this tasting shed here where they're doing the wine tastings, there's a Cadbury marquee. So if you'd like to purchase one of the books, which will have the recipes from today, um, you can get it over there for $10. But there are lots of interesting packs with tea towel, Cadbury tea towels and Freddo hats for the kids and lots of great ideas for you to try um, over there. So um, make sure you hop over and have a look. There's also some great things to sample over there. Um, there's some delicious choc chip cookies off the site and there's mum's chocolate slice. So you can pop those in your bag for later on when you're feeling a bit peckish later on in the afternoon. Okay, now on with the cooking. Um, this particular one is one from the book. Um, I <laughs> This is a rather small bench to work with, but anyway, we make do. Um, it's the flourless chocolate cardamom cake. And these types of cakes are really popular these days. Um, because they're sort of a little more al along the European line and I guess the thing is we've, you know, there's a transition with cooking over the years to more European style cakes and this is one of them. Now the basis for this one, rather than being flour like we would usually have in a cake, is actually using walnuts. Uh, you could try it with almonds as well. It's a very famous orange almond cake. I guess you've all tried that one. That's really quite spectacular too. Okay, so in the food processor here, I've ground down some walnuts. There's also a little bit of sugar. There's uh, some corn flour and also some cardamom. Now cardamom is a very aromatic spice and um, often we see it in curries, in fact. So it's sort of bit of, made a bit of a crossover from savory to sweet here. All right, so that's done. You need to get that very finely ground. So you need a good processor to do that. Now in here in the bowl, I've got four egg yolks. I'll get to the whites in a minute. You can whisk those together. I've got a little bit of sugar. We, we weighed all this stuff out before we came, so we don't have all the little demo bowls. We've just got lots of little bags. Upon bags, upon bags. Okay, a little bit of vanilla to go in there for some flavor. And also the grated rind of an orange. Now, we've got a nice sharp microplane. I'm sorry, you've got to see through this. This is where you've got the camera there got a microplane just to take that outside very flavoursome rind off. The out, very outside of all citrus is where the oils are that contain the flavour. And microplanes are great for this because they don't cut too far down into the white part or the pith which is very, bit, very bitter. So you want to avoid that sort of bitter flavour going through your cake. So just using the microplane means you can give a couple of scrapes as you move around and it'll deliver all the flavour without that bitterness. I had to chop off a bit. There was a bit of my orange that was looking a bit on the wonky side, so that had to go about right there. Okay, so that can go into the bowl. All right, so the other thing that I've got here, I've got a couple of things to do. I need to add this mixture here. Now in the bowl here, I've got some Cadbury melts. We're using the dark chocolate melts here and 
all of Cadbury's um, baking products, the great thing about them is they are in fact real chocolate. Okay, so they're full of the good things that make a beautiful tasting chocolate, cocoa, um, cocoa mass and cocoa butter. And in fact, real chocolate has to have at least 20% cocoa butter for it to be classified as chocolate, as opposed to some, are, some on the market. So I think when you use the Cadbury baking products, you'll see the difference in quality and texture, and also the smoothness in flavour, depending on what you're doing. So what I've got in here is I've melted down the chocolate. Anytime you're melting chocolate, you need to be a little bit careful. Um, you need to treat ch chocolate carefully, in fact. Um, particularly where heat's involved. So we've melted that down over the, over the simmering water there. And it's also got a half a tub of Philadelphia spreadable cream cheese in there as well. So if you can combine those together, if you um, would like, you can do it very slowly in the microwave over say 50% power in a microwave proof jug or bowl. That would work well also. So now I can add to that my ground ingredients which is the corn flour, a little sugar, as I said, the cardamom, which is the, the spicy part. And also, I need to flick out a couple of those. Let's chuck around the edge. The walnuts. Pop that back on there. Okay, so they can all be mixed through thoroughly and then we need to pop through some egg whites. So I might pop those down. What's going to aerate the, oh, no, it's not gonna happen because I haven't plugged it in, hang on. Oh. Nope, that one. Sorry, Mill. Okay, just beat up some, uh, the four egg whites are now in this bowl. We've already got the yolks in here. And um, we just need to beat those till they're stiff and add a little bit of sugar just to um, stabilize that um, foam. And then we could fold it through. Then it's going to go into a moderate oven um, for around about 35 to 45 minutes. So this is it here. And we're gonna decorate that in a minute just with them, some fresh berries. With the egg whites here in the bowl, make sure that the bowl's nice and clean, otherwise you'll find that the actual egg whites won't whip up till they're full volume. And make sure the beaters are nice and clean too. If you can actually take the eggs from the fridge a little while beforehand and allow them to warm up to room temperature, you'll actually find they'll whip up a little faster for you too. Okay, we're doing okay there. Let's see, hang on. Nope, still a bit of movement. If they're still slipping around the bowl, you'll know that they're not quite at stiff peaks. That should be enough. Let's have another look. Okay, that looks quite stiff. You want to make sure you can tip it upside down, okay? But make sure, okay? <laughs> make sure it's not going to just plop out over your head or something silly like that. That's just a demonstration trick. <laughs> okay, in there, a little bit of sugar. As I say, that will help to stabilise that foam and that will help to give some bulk and volume to the actual cake mixture. It won't take long because there's quite a lot of moisture there with the egg whites. Only a couple of tablespoons of sugar. And once you've done that, you can actually see that the mixture changes quite a lot. It becomes really quite soft and quite glossy and shiny. So it's a bit like we're on the way to making a pavlova with this particular mixture, although a little bit different today because it's the cake. Now, I'm just gonna be a little careful here. You people in the front row better watch out just in case I go a bit crazy with these beaters. There we go. Okie dokes. Mel, can you give me a scrape off, please, Del? Uh, yeah, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> All right, now the trick here is to add a little bit first. That was the one I was gonna use. Never mind, I'll come back to that. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Whenever you're adding egg whites to a mixture like this, if you try to get it all through at once, like seriously, you are going to run into trouble. So the main thing is, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> That's right, I'm good now. The main thing is at first you need to fold through a little and this actually does what we call conditions the mixture. So if you fold a little through first, you're going to lose a little of the air that you whipped in, but you actually soften up the mixture in the bowl so that it makes it easier for you to fold through the rest and retain as much of the air as possible. So that looks good, it's all softened down. The same thing can apply if you're putting cream into a cheesecake mixture. Always put a little bit through first to soften it up 
and then you can add the rest later on. There we go, hang on, you get in there. Thanks, Mills. Okay, so just fold that through using a, a fairly gentle motion. I mean, it looks like I'm going hard at it, but up and over so that you can incorporate the egg white without knocking all that air out. I mean, if you just went stirring furiously, it would be as flat as a tack and uh, your cake would be even flatter. Remember that these kind of cakes, because they don't have the structure that a normal cake has with flour, they're always going to be a, a denser and heavier type of cake because we've replaced the, the flour component of it with nuts, essentially ground nuts. So the, the texture is always a lovely sort of, um, sort of fudgy, browny kind of texture, which is quite delicious. Okay, just a couple of little extra bits there that need a bit of tweaking. There you go. Just about there, a couple on the top. Right, this needs to go into a greased uh, spring form pan, I think is probably good insurance for this. And it's just base lined so that it makes sure that you can get it out. Um, it should come away from the sides without you needing to line it fully. So then you can just spoon it into the pan. If you see any extra bits that you've missed as far as the white, you can still take care of those now. And then it's going to go into a moderate oven around 180. If you've got fan forced at home, you'll need to drop that temperature for maybe about 15 to 20 degrees. All ovens are different, so you'll know yourself what the uh, usual amount that you need to reduce to make sure that it doesn't burn. So usually about 15 to 20 is sufficient. Okay, so that's going into a moderate oven for about 35 to 45 minutes until it's cooked through. Okay, so as I said before, it's using, the, it's a delicious cake. It has that lovely cardamom and sort of orangey flavor in it. And this is it here. So as I said, it's sort of a, a more stodgy and heavier cake with lots of flavor. I'll give you that, Mel. All right, just to finish off this one today, I'm just going to actually sprinkle it with some cocoa and top it with some fruit. But you'll find that if you actually have a look in the book, um, our delicious um, Simply Heaven book with the Cadbury chocolate, baking chocolate and Philly, there's actually a delicious recipe for some quinces in there, which is, makes it a perfect winter time dessert. I mean, it's fantastic on a day like today with fresh cream and berries, but in the winter time when you're able to get quinces, you can actually poach those down till they get that beautiful ruby red color and um, have those with the cake with a, a dollop of cream as well, which makes them absolutely delicious. Okay, now to finish off, I'm just gonna pile up some berries here. And this um, particular cake, you'll be able to taste a little bit later on once the demonstration's finished. These berries are, oops, absolutely monster and they are so beautiful and fresh. Come on, on you go. Whoops. Okay, and then some blueies. So you can just load it up and then have some, maybe some pure cream to the side to serve. So a delicious orange cardamom cake with chocolate using the dark Cadbury melts. Delicious, Melanie. You might like to just pop that down there on the table. Thank you. Okay, now the last thing that we have to do, we have to do this quickly. Oh no, actually I'm doing all right. Less today, I raved on for ages, didn't I? And it's like, oh my God, I've got to finish, I've got to finish. All right, the next one we're going to do, I need to get myself sorted out here is a milk chocolate brulee. Does everyone love a brulee out there? Who's made a chocolate brulee before? Any type of brulee for that matter. No brulee makers? What about brulee eaters? Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you, Cara. Cara's a brulee. Okay, all right. Well, obviously, brulee's not made much impact on this audience at all. Anyway, I hope to change that today. And this is going to be a delicious milk chocolate one using the Cadbury milk baking block. So the Cadbury baking range, of course, comes in a number of different forms. This is a good old baking block that's been around forever. It comes in milk and dark and, of course, white. And um, as I said earlier in the demonstration, the great thing about the Cadbury baking range is that it's actually real chocolate. It's not had other things added to it that change its flavour and texture. It's actually real chocolate. So it's as real a chocolate as if you were eating Cadbury dairy milk, okay? And um, it's, fat, it, its formulation is changed so that it's better for what we need to do as far as cooking is concerned. 
So we need about half a block there, but I need to do a couple of other bits and bobs first. Into the into the bowl here over simmering water, I've got about 80 grams of spreadable filly and I've warmed that through in the microwave. You'll generally find that if you warm filly before you start to cook with it, it will help to reduce uh, lumps forming and so forth because you often put something else cold into it and it's hard to, to break up the lumps. So this looks beautiful now. So I've added to it a little bit of cream, about a third a cup of cream. This is only going to make a nice small romantic quantity for you and the special person in your life, okay? So you can of course double it to make four or triple it to make six. But um, the reason why we did this one, come on, oh, it helps if you put it on the hot plate, Trish. That's always a good move. It was got. The, I had this question mark. I was like, what? What do you mean? Question mark. Okay, so that just needs to be warmed over the heat and then you can add to it the chocolate. So we're going to use half a block here. So you can actually break these up into, just into the pips. So 100 grams is all you need. There's no need for you to grate it or anything like that. Although usually we would recommend for recipes that need grated chocolate, obviously you would use the block. Um, it's a, in a much better format for you to be able to grate. Of course, melts are fantastic and you could use the Cadbury melts uh, milk melts or dark melts or white melts or any of the blocks as well to make a, a different kind of brulee, um, just different flavoured of course. Um, the melts are specifically designed in the, their little round form, little drop form, so that they can actually melt evenly. And that's one of the things that you need to take care of when you're preparing chocolate and melting it, that it has, that you stir it around, make sure that it can't catch on the bottom of the pan or the bowl that you're using it in possibly in the microwave. Otherwise, you will burn it very quickly. Uh, on the Cadbury website, you'll find there are lots of fantastic ideas, um, not only for just baking and, and cooking with chocolate, whether it's um, cakes and, and muffins or whether it's delicious sweet desserts and uh, cheesecakes as well. But there's also some, some good hints. I don't know why this is taking so long. Come on, I'm serious. It was going like crazy before. OK, here we go. Right. Uh, on the website, yes, there's some fantastic hints and tips. Um, there's also a special section that talks about how to treat chocolate if you're going to be um, making um, moulded eggs, let's say, for Easter, or if you want to make your own chocolates. If you're going to be that out there and try some of those fantastic things, you probably need to take a little bit more care. And I would suggest that you have a look at the website and see what it suggests. Now it's going to be too hot. Um, have a look at the website and see what it actually suggests. Sometimes you'll need to actually re-temper the chocolate. So that can be done in a number of ways. We're going to have a very steamed cake there in a minute. Uh, it can be done in a number of ways and you'll find that on the website it's got, it'll tell you very specifically what you need to do to make sure that your chocolate's going to perform fantastically well. Okay, now this is getting warm underneath, which is exactly what we wanted. And that chocolate will melt down really quickly. So we just want to do this fairly gently because we don't want to overheat it. A brulee essentially is a custard, a chocolate, well it doesn't have to be a chocolate custard, this one is, and as I said you could do it with the dark or the milk just as easily. And the other nice thing that you can do with it is to add some fruit to it. So whether you added some uh, raspberries or blueberries to make a delicious fruity custard would be awesome. That is just beautiful there. Okay, the last couple of things I've got to do, add a little bit of sugar. If you're doing one with dark chocolate instead of the milk, you may find you'll need to adjust with slightly more sugar um, if you find it a little bit bitter. And lastly, a couple of egg yolks. Now the egg yolks are what's going to help to set the custard there. There we go. Now because that's just over simmering water, if that was just straight over the hot plate, you probably have scrambled eggs and chunks and all sorts of awful things happening. So keep just moving that over the heat. And essentially, that looks like a beautiful custard, sort of good enough to eat right now, to be perfectly honest. We'll turn that heat off. All right, as I said, this is a delicious quantity for two. So we actually have two done here, and I've got two ready to go here. So as long as you've got a container that's approximately half a cup. Now hang on, Mel, I'm going to consolidate come here. Out, come out and take that Did you get my torch working? No. No, we're going to blow that torch out. <laughs> very sad. 
Okay, so what I've got here, as I say, is a half cup. Now, this quantity was spe specially designed for um, you and your favourite person in the whole world for Valentine's Day, and it actually comes from a special occasion section in the book. So it only serves two, but as I said, you can double it or triple it or quadruple it, depending on how many are coming. It will work e it very just easily as well. What I've got here is the, just two little containers. Now you'll find that when you make this kind of brulee, usually brulee doesn't have the filly in it, but the great thing about it is with brulee, because it's essentially a custard, you know, all custards have the tendency to curdle and curdle quickly. And then, then they become a little sort of, I'm sure all of you have had a creme caramel that was a bit more like scrambled egg. Okay, so by having the filly in there, it actually helps to stabilise the custard and give it a little firmness and uh, gives you a really great result. Now, this, these are going to be beautifully full, which is great. We haven't whipped a whole lot of air into them, so they won't sort of rise up and go up and over. Now, you'll notice also that I've got them in this little small container, which is the dinkiest baking dish I think I've ever seen. It's an absolute beauty. Um, in the bottom of the pan there is some water. And so this is what we call a water bath or a bain-marie. So a bain-marie is designed to help the brulee because it's essentially an egg mixture that we want to set with cream. We want to make a beautiful, smooth custard. What we want to do there is to just allow it to cook slowly, okay? You know what it's like when you're doing scrambled eggs and you know you leave it for a second, you come back, it's like it's gone. Well, we don't want chocolate scrambled eggs. We want a beautifully set, smooth custard. So by doing it in a water bath, that slows the whole process down because the water around it is not quite as ferocious as the direct heat. So that would go into a fairly slow oven around 150 degrees and maybe about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a little longer. So you just need to give it a bit of a wobble. And um, once you can see that it's sort of all done by the centre, generally, it's OK to come out. The beauty with these um, little brulees, milk chocolate brulees, is you can actually make them ahead of time. I am a great one for being organised ahead. It's hard though, isn't it? When you're doing something at home, it's really hard to be that organised sometimes. The beauty of these is you could probably make them up a day or two in advance. Same with cheesecakes and so forth. That's why I love them for entertaining. And they can look really flash if I can hear that thing clicking behind me. <laughs> if you could burn the sugar. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the great thing is at this stage, you can bake them off in the oven, allow them to set, put them into the fridge and they can stay there a day or two. When you're ready to use them, so once you've had your dinner, you're ready to serve, it makes sense to get them out for a little while because it's going to be quite firm coming from the fridge, okay? It's gonna be quite firm. So you wanna take that out and let it come up to room temperature, essentially, and then you can sprinkle it <laughs> to get it lit. No, we're, we're, having, a, we're having a technical moment. <laughs> So what you would normally do, the reason why a brulee is called brulee, brulee means like burnt cream. Um, this is the gadget to do it with. Unfortunately, I can't make that happen right now. When we were up at Claremont, we went up to the factory this morning and we got into the kitchen. We are having a lovely time getting everything ready and then brought it all back down. And I was like, well, it was like a flamethrower. We're having so much fun with it. Anyway, we don't know why, but it's not working now. So we keep turning it upside down to put the gas into it, which is how you would fill one of these torches. But for some reason, it's not working. So if you're an expert in a torch like this, I'd love to see you after the show because I've got another demonstration like this. And if I don't do something, we're going to have another lot of unburnt cream. So the thing is, you sprinkle your sugar over the top. We have caster here. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to happen, but you would sprinkle it quite liberally over the top like so. And then you would light up your torch and you wave it carefully over the top. It doesn't need to be like a flamethrower. You know, you don't have to be a superhero when you're attempting this one. You need to just carefully wave that uh, flame over the top. The sugar will melt down and it will caramelise beautifully, but it will burn if you're not careful, OK? And we don't have to have a literal translation of burnt cream. We only want to toast up that to make that lovely sort of crunchy top on there. And... Um, 
you need to just whiz over the top of those and then they're ready to go to the table. One of the nicest things I think about a, a beautiful brulee is when you tap on the top with your spoon and you get that lovely sort of crunch, you know, you can hear that sort of cracking sound. So unfortunately, I don't know, we'll just go away and have to read the instructions or something strange like that and figure out our torch. But as I say, it was going like a beauty this morning. So I don't know. Anyway, that's what you would do with your beautiful milk chocolate brulees. And I'm sorry, I can't show you that because we've got cameras, we've got the whole lot. There oh, are. there you go, there's See? the picture. Well done, good thingy, 99. <laughs> okay, so that, as I said, this one comes from the book. And um, yes, yeah, so it's set with a lovely heart plate for your sweetheart. <laughs> okay, so a great one using the um, Cadbury mil uh, milk block, but you could use, as I say, the melts as well. All right, so don't forget, you can catch us up on the website. There's always something delicious and new, cadburykitchen.com.au. That means us. So the next time you look, you'll know it's Trish and Mel and uh, working like navvies to get something delicious out to you every month. And um, we did some beautiful Christmas things we we're very excited about. And the week of Christmas, we actually shot Easter. So we're so ahead of ourselves. Anyway, um, yes, that's what we like to do. Um, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook too.